Well, 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 welcome back, my friends, for the epic part two with the Humboldt hero, breeder extraordinaire, Caleb of CSI. As always, you're joined by your boy, Heavy Days, here from the Upside Down Library. And on this one, we want to give a massive shout out to our incredible sponsors who help make the show happen, as always. Seeds here now, your number one seed bank in the industry, a guarantee not just on germination, on satisfaction, meaning at the end of the growth, if you're not happy, hit them up. They'll send you something to make it right. The reason why they offer this is because they only stock the highest quality breeders in the game. That's how they know you're going to be stoked at the end of a grow. Don't just worry about wasting your money. Worry about wasting your time. A guarantee on satisfaction means you don't need to be worried about this. A massive shout out to Copa Biological. These guys are the world leaders in sustainable biocontrol solutions to crop pests and diseases. If you're battling spider mites, check out Copa's new Spidex Vital Plus sachets. These are new Persimilis breeding sachets that release predator mites into your crop continually over a period of several weeks, providing sustained spider mite control. Now you don't have to spread carrier material into your garden just to introduce some predator mites. Just hang the sachets in the crop, let the Persimilis walk out and do the work for you. Trust me guys, you don't want to have to go up against a spider mite infestation without Spidex Vital Plus. These are truly the best predators on the market, the best in the game. I promise you try it once, you'll see the quality. Pulse sensors, you know them, you love them. You've probably already got a pulse unit in your garden. Why? Because it helps you track all of the hidden variables that you may not be consciously thinking about on the day-to-day -day level. And through fine-tuning these parameters, you can get a bigger yield. More turps, more flavor, more resin, more potency. God, what can't it do? Whether you're thinking of running a single tent, a single room, a multi-state operation, it's time to get serious, guys. Get yourself a Pulse Sensor. It's a no-brainer. And given they've just recently introduced the Pulse Hub, no better time to get on board to be able to fully integrate all of your units into one central localized hub. Massive shout out to Pulse Sensors. We love and appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Massive shout out to our friends at Organics Alive, helping the homies grow the highest quality product worldwide. If you want a powdered, simple, organic fertilizer option, Organics Alive is the one for you. People have been sweeping competitions all around America using Organics Alive because their products are superior. If you want an easy to use, all-in-one, versatile option that has a range of different products to help any situation, including bloom, veg, transition, micronutrients, microbes, Organics Alive has everything you need. They're going to help you take your next crop to the next level. Check them out, guys. Quick release because they're fine powders, all organic. What more could you ask for? Huge shout out to our friends at Organics Alive. We really appreciate you guys getting on board. Please, everyone, go check them out. And a massive shout out to our newest sponsors, Dynavap. I'm sure you guys have heard me talking about Dynavap. They are an incredible vape company based out of USA, producing some of the most coolest engineering and vape technology you've seen for a while. These guys honestly help me get off bongs and transition to vaping. I cannot speak highly enough about Dynavap's products. Huge shout out guys, go check them out. And on this episode today, we have the Humboldt hero, the head honcho of Pirates of the Emerald Triangle, the strain historian and breeder extraordinaire. A massive welcome and thank you to Caleb of CSI Humboldt. Here to talk all things breeding. His recent work with the F1 Durban. Upcoming projects. How he's able to make all the incredible lines he does. And so, so much more. Without further delay, let's get into it. Just to, to loop back, you know, we were talking about the Kush 4 and its relation to the Hindu Kush. Talking about another Hindu Kush that's been very popular for you, the Purple Hindu Kush. 
tell me a little bit about this one because there's now a number of Hindu kushas, purple Hindu kushas specifically that go around. You know, a lot of people are like, is this the Jaeger one? Is this a different one? Can you give us any insights into the purple Hindu kush you use that's not the Jaeger cut? Well, so, okay. Um, so purple Hindu kush, this, the, the purple Hindu kush I have is the one that was made popular in Southern Oregon. And it sources back to Millerville Farms in Southern Oregon. And uh, according to them, uh, you know, they got, you know, s- some seeds um, of, of him Hindu Kush, grew them out, and there was a purple one. And that's where it started. Um, there's a couple different variations. I'm not sure what the, entirely the... T- the whole story is but um one story was you know they took a male from from those seeds and crossed it to the purple hindu and that's how they made jaeger it's just a it's just you know a a further you know breeding of the same thing um and then another i don't know uh i don't know if it's a story or if it's just my impression but it almost seems like the jaeger could just be a you know, a hermaphrodite S1 seed from the purple Hindu. Um, but anyways, um, you know, and then there's a few stories of where, you know, what that, that Hindu Kush exactly is. I don't know if it even ties back to like a Amsterdam Hindu Kush or if it's, you know, something entirely different, but supposedly the seeds came from, uh, this pharmacy uh or i think it was the pharmacy in like los angeles somewhere around there um uh, so i don't know i don't know but uh it was extremely popular in southern oregon um for for a lot of years and every time i went up to oregon i would buy some of the finished flower at all the dispensaries because it has that similar uh that similar uh black licorice anise uh terp um you know, like Mendo Purple S ones do. So, I I kind of liked it. Yum, cool. And I mean, just to clarify, which of the two plants do you favor, the Jaeger or the Purple Hindu? Um, I like the Jaeger better. It, it it's more refined. You know, um, the Purple Hindu, um. Seem, seems a little broad. It's it's kind of like when you grow a Mendo the Mendo Perp cut and then a Mendo Perp S one side by side, you know, they're they're extremely similar. But then uh, a lot of times the S ones will like refine, you know, certain things. They won't have be so broad, you know, with their 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 terp profiles. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. And and do you you know you've sort of alluded to it already. You got a bit of a soft spot for the licorice terps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I love it too and I feel like it's really underrepresented. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um one one thing I talk uh a lot about with uh you know like uh you know my buddy Matt, right? And uh not so dog um is uh how the Mendo Purple S1s, this is a total tangent of course, but there's like a recessive in there um, that is some of the strongest roadkill skunk that I've found anywhere. And it's these little runty, like ABC esque runty, huh. uh, these little runty recessive plants. Um, and they just reek of just skunk spray as close as I've really found, you know, I mean, they sp- smell like spray, whereas, you know, the Sterling skunk I mess, mess around with, that's more of, uh, you know, the, the skunk got hit, you know, a, a, a day, or, day or three aw- ago. But th- this stuff is almost spray status because it's so pungent. But uh, Wow. You, 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 you basically answered the question for me. But just to clarify, because it was one of the listeners, they said, I've grown a number of your Mendo Perps hybrids. They've all been wicked and I've been kind of uniquely surprised by each of them. Mm-hmm. Is that skunk one you just mentioned the most surprising thing you found in them or have you found other equally weirdly divergent stuff? 
Oh yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's one of my favorite favorite lines to play with, or S ones. Um, and you know, uh, S one, you know, all that stuff, you know, will show up. If it doesn't show up in the F1 hybrid, it'll show up in F2, you know, a lot of times. But uh, um, there's so much variation as far as, you know, terpene profiles and just variety in that stuff. I had one that was like a, a chocolate coffee spice, you know, and then there's tons of just super, super, some of the fruitiest stuff you've ever smelled, you know, and then there's there's hashy Nag Champa ones and you know, blackberry ones and grapey ones and the skunky ones. And there's so much in those, uh, you know, it's, it's always fun to grow those things. That's really, really cool. I would never expect like a Bubba type plant by the sounds of it in terms of the smells. That's, that's really cool. And that, that plant was weird too. Uh, it was like a lanky, uh, yeah, it, it, it was way different than the norm as far as uh, most of the MPS ones go but definitely unique. Damn. And I, I mean, you, you touched on it, the Sterling skunk, you know, shout out and, uh, you know, rest in peace, Zochi. We're all grateful that he passed that one on. Yeah, yeah. When I chatted with Bodhi um, in December, when I was in the States, I met up with him for dinner and he was like, I was like, is it the real deal? And he was like, yep, it's the real deal. What's your thoughts on the Sterling skunk? It's, it's cool. I, I like it a lot. Um, it, uh, you know the the ones I released, I I put a warning on because uh, I I would not recommend these to be grown indoors. Uh, they they definitely can be some of the worst hermaphrodites inside, um, but outdoors zero hermaphrodites, which is you know par for par for the course of how things work. Um, but uh, you know, um, it's definitely a line that. Uh, needs to be uh worked and you know because when, when, when i reproduced them did my open pollination there are ones that were just you know rock solid just skunky as hell they they made your eyes water there so 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 strong but you know it, it, it's a percentage game again you know and so a lot of them are you know just variations of and then you know uh yeah but as 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 a standalone plant, it's it's definitely not going to be the ticket, you know. It doesn't produce you know big fat chunky nugs or this that or other. It definitely is a building block to hopefully something better, you know. Yeah. I, look, I, I was going to ask, you know, what would you pair it with? What do you think you would pair it with that would help it to be what the public are in search of? I mean. I kind of want to pair it with a few things, um, you know, just to kind of start with, uh, um, I'd kind of like to work like some of the skunky deep chunks in there, um, you know, to help, you know, the plant out. I, I'd like to also maybe mix in uh, the Christmas bud I work with that has some strong skunky terps as well to it. And it has like some super, you know, pungency as well. Um, and then, you know, if, if, you know, I was able to get something, you know, more so what I was looking for, you know, to hybridize something like that with like a chem D or something that already has, you know, a nice base and the potency, uh, I, I, th I think you couldn't go wrong. And, and like, just to confirm, those ones you were saying, you know, where it's like makes your eyes water. Do you think that's the roadkill smell that people are searching of, or do you think the the thing that people in their minds are looking for it's not it's not like as real as what they think it is, and it's never going to be like an actual dead skunk, but this is pretty close. Oh, well, I think people have different you know, uh, things they're looking for. Some people are looking for this roadkill smell that's like a few days. It's like a muskier smell. Whereas like a, a, a skunk spray smell is, you know, just, you know, blinds your eyes, you know, makes them water, you know, <laughs> makes your lungs bleed, you know, <laughs> it's potent. <laughs> that's what I want from my roadkill, you know, because, you know, that's that's when you first hit that skunk dead on. No offense, skunk, but, you know, <laughs> um, but, you know, the 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 few day old roads roadkill is still pretty OK. But I want that fresh, fresh. 
but I don't know if it translates into dry weed form. Do you think maybe like whatever terpenes are involved, you know, the trendy word thiols, um, yeah. do you think that they, they're just too volatile and you lose it really quickly? You know, I think back in the day, um, everybody was selling wet weed. And so your, your, your terps are still like super strong with that wet. But then as soon as it's dry, you know, um, it, it's gone you know, with a lot of those, you know, terps and thiols and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, yeah. I think a lot of the stuff we're looking for is, is, is too volatile to stick in a bag for too long. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, um, I wanted to ask you, cause we, we mentioned Bodie and, uh, in relation to the Sterling skunk, I noticed on the website, you got the mango biche. And it's always been one that's been interesting to me because I remember Bodhi made an offhand comment years ago and he's like, oh, it's like the blue dream of South America. And I, I never never quite understood what he meant by that. But um, I've tried some hybrids and it's nice stuff. What would you say uh, about it? That's a good analogy. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, I've, I've, I've run it a few times now and uh, uh, that's not, that's not bad. <laughs> I mean, that's like saying it's a basic beginner plant. Yeah, that's probably pretty accurate. <laughs> okay. It's like a begin it's a beginner sativa. Yeah. But but a long one. It 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 takes just as long as uh as the Burmese. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like the mango biche, but uh there's something about the Burmese like plant itself that uh I'm really drawn towards. Um, whereas the, the, the mango beach, a, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a beginner plant, you know, it's, it's a good one though. Um, and is the effect like super uplifting or it's more in like the mild uplifting category? Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a, a, a great sativa aficionado quite yet. <laughs> I've been buried in Indica's my whole life, so you know. Uh, get back to me in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll come test all your sativa hybrids for you. All right, sounds good. <laughs> oh no, just the pure, pure sativas. I'm okay with the hybrids. Oh, true. Thought I'd snuck in there. <laughs> I'll, I'll share that. I'll share. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, one of the fan submitted questions was: people had noticed that there were some NL5 haze hybrids sneaking into the lineup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about the cut you've been working with are we talking like dog shit yeah they must be talking about that i mean it's had a big resurgence and you know not so has been pushing it for rightly good reasons right 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 um that that that's one uh oh, i think i well and the chem one you know that 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 definitely you know i think falls kind of into that category a little bit um as far as any uh, <clears throat> other NL5 haze hybrids, uh, those those I'm not at liberty to discuss for, <laughs> right quite yet. <laughs> we have to keep our eyes open and ears listening. Well, uh, you know, uh, sometimes the politics out there are strange. <laughs> I'm actually impressed you have been able to navigate the politics of it all because you know, you, you do work with a lot of different strains and that sort of lends itself to people getting butt hurt. How, how do you navigate that space? Do you think it's just about like when you do a project, as long as you're doing it with integrity, like people can't really get too upset or like how do you, what would be your general advice? I mean, uh, I wouldn't say <laughs> I navigate very well. <laughs> Everybody gets butt hurt. I mean, you want a list? <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the S ones you've made, and those are all the yeah. people. I know, right? <laughs> the only people who aren't butt hurt are, you know, uh, the clones I've I've personally held for twenty five years or so. You know. <laughs> wow. Okay. So just yeah, there's no there's no easy way to do it. You just got to do it. No, no, and you know, honestly, uh, most of the people who are butt hurt. I'm not going to name names, <laughs> but most of them didn't have anything to do with creating breeding or anything, you know, the, the, these cuts that they're all butthurt about, you know, 
And, you know, a lot of times people, I'll, I'll, I'll research stuff before I release something. And, you know, so, something will have like, you know, five different companies making the same seeds. So I'm like, well, they can't get butt hurt at me. Oh, no, never mind. I was wrong. <laughs> They're butt hurt at me, even though there's a ton of people, you know, and I, I could tell you many stories on the topic, but, you know, I'll, I'll leave that one be for now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Look, it's, um, it, it's a tough one. I definitely get it, you know, because I feel like the landscape of the community is ever changing and, you know, how, how do you feel about that? You know, because if we look at the commercial scene at the moment, the most biggest and most popular companies like Doja, like DEO Farms, these guys who are like, you know, making millions and millions of dollars off selling, you know, quote, Cali packs, they're not the guys who are lauded among the heady community, you know, like because they're, they're not like a breeder's breeder, so to speak. How do you feel the scene is progressing in terms of that landscape and what do you think is going to be the trajectory going forward? I mean, those are good questions, um, but I got to admit, uh, I I tend to like stay in my little Humboldt County hole and uh, I mean, my, my long-term goal, you know, is um, I'm hoping looking to have a couple dispensaries up here, a nursery, uh, you know, a, a, a pretty nice breeding lab or two, um, and then grow my own flower and basically, you know, be vertically integrated and just, you know, do everything myself, but on a very small manageable scale that I can have fun with. That's, that's my long, short term goal, you know, three, four five years. Um, so as far as, you know, outside of my little tiny bubble here, um, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to it, you know? Yeah, understandable. And golly, I'm sure a lot of people are really excited to hear that that's what you've got on the cards. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it would be based in like Northern California, Mendocino type area? Oh, I, I've, I've already, um, I'm already working on it. I've got, um, my my buildings and uh working on the licenses and you know getting hopefully getting stuff built out over the next couple of years so yeah and 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 then as soon as i'm open and you know good for all that you know anybody who wants to you know come through and you know visit i'll i'll, I'll have the spot to visit oh my lord i think Everyone will put their hands up to be guinea pigs. Whatever you need tested, buddy, we'll do it for you. <laughs> right, right. That's that's yeah. really, really cool because I feel like a lot of people have a very doom and gloom forecast for the industry going forward. So it's really refreshing to hear that people like yourself are, you know, I don't want to sound too dramatic, but it's it's almost like the antidote. Right. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't think there's going to be much money in it at all. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a tough time just surviving, but as long as I'm able to do what I like to do, I, I think that's all that I really want. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. I'd love to ask you a few questions about creating seeds. Mm -hmm. You know, part of these are my questions. Part of them are the listeners' submitted questions. But the first one I wanted to ask is, how long do you let seeds mature on plants for? Do you just let it go the length it would normally go or do you like really push it to try to get the most out of it? So uh, I generally, um, you know, w once the room is like fully pollinated, I don't start counting down until the room's fully pollinated or as pollinated as it's getting. And then I'll, I'll leave the seeds on the plants for between six and eight weeks. And, you know, just to make sure they're, you know, nice and solidly ripe. And then, uh, um, I've seen other people, you know, they're, they're, they're selling seeds, you know, next day, as soon as it's down, I'm like, uh, okay. Uh, I, I try to dry, dry my seeds for a couple of weeks usually. And then, then they get, you know, sorted and sifted and blown and all that. And then they go in the fridge for ideally no less than a couple of weeks. But usually I don't like, you know, taking them out of the fridge for at least a month. 
you know, before, you know, I start messing with them. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the, the average right there. Yeah. Wow. And, and when they're on the plants, mm-hmm. are you treating them as if they're like a sensi crop or are you like really pushing them with nutrients and like not trying to avoid a fade and just trying to keep it stocked up? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely uh, uh, keep put uh, pushing them with nitro and you know all the other other uh, nutrients. Um, I'm I'm not trying to flush them. I'm you know I'm trying to you know just keep feeding those seeds. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And as a follow up, I myself have been wondering. What do you do with your like the material that's left over after you've shucked the seeds? You know, there's a lot of heads there. Do you try mm-hmm. to like make a concentrate or anything? Or like I've had other people say, oh, it's usually not the greatest material to try to do anything with. What do you do with it? Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to do something because you know I I like I don't like throwing stuff away. I like reusing. I like I don't like being wasteful. You know, if I can help it. And so, you know, to be honest, <laughs> I'll end up with, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of that stuff all, all st- stored up and then, you know, realize I'm not doing anything with it and take it to the dump for something, the, the, the green waste. <laughs> I think the last time I took it to the green waste and it became some compost. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a tough one. I, I got one of those little purple pro units and um, I tested some hey. of it. I think it came out like seven or eight percent so it's definitely not like the same by any stretch not that i think anyone thought so but yeah right right how do you like your purple pro you know so obviously i saw the the discussion um about you know when you and matt not so met up and um you know the the gist i got was that you guys weren't really convinced about it Uh i think for me you know, I, I tested it a lot and I think it works. I think my overall yeah. summary would be that I feel like it really confirm it just confirms what you already know, you know, like yeah. you, you, you test a plant that's your favorite plant and, you know, a, not like a Chem 91, but like a plant where you're pretty confident it's pretty potent and, you know, sure enough, it will be the most potent that you get tested Mm-hmm. The thing that I definitely thought was a hurdle was that um, you have to do a lot of tests and then take the average. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought that from a consumer point of view, people really want something where you just put something in, you hit the button, and then you get the accurate answer straight away. Yeah. So I, I think it's something that can be used. You've got to know how to use it. Um, but it, it's definitely not perfect yet. Right, right. Yeah, I'm... I'm still a little suspicious, but... <laughs> yeah, well, like, I mean, that's the thing. It's working on an algorithm, which, you know, it, they, they provide the paper so you can read how they develop the algorithm, and I, I trust that part of it, but it seems like mm-hmm. there's a lot of variables, and when I've been discussing it with some other listeners who have one as well, we all seem to come to the conclusion that there needs to be a far more standardized way in which you load it in because we've all noticed if you just you know, you fill it with some herb and you do the test. If you pull that same little puck out and just like break it up and then repack it back in so that it's all the particles have been moved around, you can get variation. So it seems like there needs to be a very standardized way to test it so that when I'm telling you what I got, it's the same as what you're getting. Right, right. Gotcha. Maybe maybe I need to use it a little more. I've, I've got a bunch of stuff I bought at a bunch of... Uh, Oregon, uh, Southern Oregon dispensaries and they got their numbers on them. So I was planning to test them here pretty soon. I mean, it would be cool to see like the incorporation of it into a breeding program because that was what they really pitched to me. And, and, you know, the theory sounds solid where they were saying you can test stuff. Like basically, apparently, as soon as you get like resin on the plant, basically, you can test it. And of course, the numbers are going to be like less than 1%. But they'll still vary, and they they seem to suggest when I was interviewing them that the the stuff that tests higher earlier will be the stuff that tests higher later as well. And they were basically saying you can start thinning plants out in like you know week four, week five, just based on those preliminary yeah. numbers. And I thought that would be mm-hmm. interesting for someone like you who you know is going through five hundred right. plants. Right, right. Yeah, interesting, interesting stuff nonetheless. 
just as a, a follow-on from what we were talking about earlier, you know, you're talking about this facility. One of the listeners was specifically keen to know, would you ever consider releasing clones? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, w- once uh, I have my, you know, my vertical integration all going, um, my my uh, main focus would be, uh, I think a lot of people don't want to, you know, uh, you know, select their own, you know, seed, seed plants that they don't want to, you know, grow out a bunch of seeds and make their own selections, blah, blah. So one of the things, you know, I definitely would be doing is growing out these populations, making selections, choosing plants, uh, you know, for indoor grow, outdoor grow, you know, a bunch of different things. I really want to, you know, make some ABC selections types that people can grow in their front yards or whatever and just be like, ha ha, <laughs> you know, but, you know, make them selected plants so people don't have to root through a hundred or 200 seeds. Uh, you know, that might not be the best to find good ones. And so that, that, that's kind of where, where I'd be heading with, with all that for sure. Sure. And and do you think, generally speaking, the future of growing is going to be more in clones, or you think it'll always be seed? Uh, I think they all have their place. You know, um, you know, clone clones can be reliable, um, but you know, seed, seeds are easy, and also seeds, you know, pop them in your fridge, pop them in your freezer, they're good for ten or twenty years. You know, definitely, definitely, they're like a bit of a time vault in that sense, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think would have a better chance of success? Let's say you got a clone and you want to improve it. You know, you're like, I've got this plant. I really like it. There's there's one or two things I can acknowledge are not perfect and would be better if they're maybe, you know, bit bigger yield, better structure. Do you mm-hmm, think you mm-hmm. would be best to S1 it and run through like 100 females and just try to find a plant or two that has those improved traits? Or do you think you would be better to just try to make some hybrids with a plant, like a male that, you know, maybe generally speaking, that line of the male has like better structure and then you're just trying to select a plant that's like mostly leaning to the mum with a few better traits? Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think I'd, I'd lean towards, you know, uh, S1-ing it, running, running a bunch out. Um, and then um, maybe ideally... Uh, you know, finding a, a like an outcross type that doesn't push anything forward, and or much of anything, you know, like maybe structure or whatever, but not like terpenes or potency or whatever, whatever. And then you know, ma- make a hybrid that you know takes the best qualities of that, you know, and then uh, you know, make some fairly stable seed seed lines. Mm-hmm. And I guess as an extension of that, let's say. Let's say we're talking about the TK because I know you've done a lot of work with the S1s of that. Mm-hmm. TK, generally speaking, you know, it's it's got a bit of stretch to it. It's certainly not like a squat indica thing. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Do you think if you hunted through enough S1s, you could find something that is like quite squat or there's like a limitation? Like if the plant you're working with is very stretchy, like you're going to sort of struggle to find a plant inside of it that is like the same thing but on a short body. Yeah, um, with TK, um, I didn't really find anything that was, you know, squat or, um, you know, stumpy like that um, outside of, you know, just plants you wouldn't really want to keep at all. And I don't think they were just squat and stumpy because it was a good thing. I think they were just, you know, you know, uh, inbred type runts, you know, but you're going to get with any S1 types, you know you're always going to get a population of uh, recessive, just eh, garbage. And sometimes the garbage is good though. Yeah, That's true. You That's know? true. I mean, you know? not, not talking about the garbage. Can you tell us a little bit about the TK5750? Cause I've seen it popping up a lot and uh, I'm, I'm interested. You got my ears peaked. Oh, 5150. Sorry. <laughs> the 5150. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, um, uh, so the fifty one fifty, um, uh, I uh, I sprouted a bunch of uh, the the first time I ran a, a bunch of uh, TKS one seeds. Um, I sprouted a bunch of them, and then my buddy comes through, and he's like, um, 
I, I need some plants. And I'm like, well, I got all these seeds and, uh, you know, you, you could have all these seed plants. So he ended up running all these TKS ones and I just, you know, sprouted, you know, another hundred, you know, the next go around. Um, but, uh, when I went over and, you know, checked out his run of them, um, my favorites were number seven, number 14 and number 50 and number 51. And, uh, I think the seven was like a white, you know, the white, it was like, it looked like the white. Um, and then the 14 looked like a green girl scout cookie plant. Right. And then, uh, the 50 and 51, they were both OG Kush types, you know, TK types. Um, and you know, chunky frosty, just, you know, really nice. And so, you know, I, I, I got samples of, you know, those four, you know, the four favorites from his, his run and, uh, um, took them home and smoked the, you know, smoked them all, smoked the 51. It was just like eh, decent, but whatever. But I smoked the 50 and, um, that, that, that one made every time I smoked it, it made me dur like a little, a little crazy. <laughs> And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with my smoke, you know, most of the time, um, other people smoked it and they couldn't function because, you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> so, um, it, it, you know, it's the number 50, but I started calling it the 51 50 cause it was the 50 and the 51 that were, were, were my prime selections. And, uh, anyways, so ended up keeping the cut and you know, working with it and it breeds, breeds pretty okay. That's brilliant. You know, cause I, I was going to ask you are, you, are you really hunting like 6,000 plants or something? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. When I saw 5150, no. I was like, fuck, he's going next level now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other one I uh, kept from uh, my, my uh, next run, which was another hundred and something or so was the 677. But that actually stood for bed six number seventy seven. <laughs> okay, it wasn't it wasn't from another seven hundred plant run. <laughs> five one five zero. There you go. Everyone, keep your eye yeah. out for that. And yeah. just as a quick follow up, I might have missed it. Does it have the same flavor profile as the TK, or is it like different in a way? It's it's pretty close to a, a traditional TK. Nothing too 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 impressive. It's just uh, you know TK. You know, it's high as what it is, but th this one just every time I smoked it, it just seemed to, you know, uh, yeah, do the trick. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. I love that. And yeah. uh, just you know, while we're on the topic of the TK, do you have any thoughts on you know Marty from TK Origins? You know, has come out and said what he said about the origin and the, you know the speculation that it's like sort of Hindu by Hindu, roughly or, you know, whatever the Emerald Triangle strain is. What's your thoughts on all of that? Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a tough one right there. Um, I mean, um, yeah, uh, uh, that, 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 that's a good discussion. Um, I mean, the, the story has been variable since the start, and... Um, marty uh he he posted uh on icy mag years and years ago um the same story but different and so the story's been a bit flexible for probably the better part of the last 10 years give or take um you know so are you sort of yet to be convinced i mean there's a there's a good bit of truth to it. Let me put it that way. I, that's, that's a better way to phrase it. There's a good bit of truth to it, but I think some of the details might not be a hundred percent. You know, uh, I'm I'm cool with uh, Alec. You know, who who's who's the one who you know uh, found the OG Kush, um, and you know sprouted that seed, and that the seed he sprouted does tie back in to you know marty and that whole crew so there is a lot of truth to it 
It's just, I think some of the details, um, I just, I don't know if some things that shouldn't be solid are being made solid now, you know, like it was a mystery of what it could be, but now it's, we know exactly what it was. No, no, no. I don't think it changes that much. I would like to, um, find out who the guy Marty worked for back when he was a kid. Um, cause Marty was just a water boy back in those days. And yeah, I've had plenty of water boys. I never was a water boy, <laughs> except for my own shit. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'd, I'd love to find out who, you know, he was growing for because obviously they should know what that Emerald triangle was. And I mean, Marty thought it came from Washington, Seattle area. Um, but um, I mean, the Emerald Triangle is, you know, Humboldt, Mendo and Tr Trinity County, you know. So I don't know. It's, it's 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 interesting, you know. Yeah. I mean, could you just in isolation, could you believe the general formula of like a Hindu cross to a hindu type plant or do you think oh that does like what you based on what you've seen that's not really what you think it it could be it could be a hindu hindu kush type hybrid um when my buddy grew out uh all those uh tks1 seeds um his room was a little over nitrode but a little too much nitrogen he, he grows in beds just like i do um and his room was cold probably colder i think and his his TKS1 plants looked Jurassic. Like, I'm like, how did nothing in that room look like OG Kush or Triangle Kush at all? But then then uh um because I think it was a like a winter spring run. It was probably a winter run. And then he took clones of all those plants and did another run, you know, with the clones. And the whole room, it was like, you know, 50 or so different uh S1 S1s. Uh, but from clone, you know, and it all looked like triangle Kush or OG Kush, the whole, whole room, you know, from, from the clone room, but from seed, it looked Jurassic. It was just old school Hindu Kush type, you know, plants just, you know, I don't know about Sensi Hindu Kush, maybe, maybe not, but definitely some, some version of Hindu Kush. Yeah. I believe that totally. Yeah, interesting. Okay, cool. So, just a bit of an unrelated question, which I, I love to ask all of the breeders who are a bit prolific. What's your advice for someone who's looking to get into the breeding game and do their own thing? Because, as I mentioned earlier, there seems to be a growing sentiment that people feel like it's hard to differentiate themselves. And, you know, I think the majority of people who get into breeding, they're doing it for passion. And there's a part of them that doesn't want to be perceived as you know, just producing a run-of-the-mill thing that's like everyone else. You know, everyone would like to produce something that's unique and is going to stand up. Do you have any advice for how someone might be able to do that? Well, you know, uh, just recommend that somebody, you know, find something they, they really like and just focus on, you know, like one or two things. Because, uh, um, you know, for example, the way I do things... Uh, yeah, it it's it's difficult. It's it's not entirely fun, um, and you know I think uh, I am gonna you know eventually here be changing to, you know just focusing on you know a couple few things, and just you know really really try to, you know, you know work those things until they're just amazing. You know what I mean? Versus you know all kinds of different things, eh, you know, it gets watered down. So as long as you're focused on something that just, you know, is really, you, you, you're really passionate about that, that, that would be, that would, that would probably be the best bet. Yeah, know? definitely. I, I feel like if you're passionate about something, chances are other people will be passionate about it also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and even yeah. just from the perspective of if you're passionate about it, people would be like, oh, like it, it must have something to offer if that's what you're really mm -hmm. focused on, you know? 
right 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 you know interesting okay Uh, one of the new favorite questions i've been asking a lot of people is without being able to know anything about the individual because obviously you'd prefer to know specifics but without being able to know anything about the individual if you could only recommend one pack as just something where you think majority of people are going to be pretty happy with what they find inside of it what would be your go-to sort of offering for the general public Hmm. um i mean uh uh there's 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 a there's a few but uh i think uh anything uh from the big bad wolves those are you know kind of tried and true um you know uh shout out to not so for sure uh you know his headband times Chem D, that that one. I don't think anybody's found found a pack that hasn't had all kinds of gold in it. So, you know, um, I mean, both the Chem D and the headband breed really well. Um, yeah, the, the, those ones are pretty tried and true. That's music to my ears because I, as soon as I got my hands on a pack of that Chem D headband, I put it away. I was like, this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Beautiful yeah, stuff. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. I, um, you know, you, you sort of touched on it and a lot of people are getting super hyped for the fact that uh, you have some fun collabs coming up, you know, some with Not So, some with Matt. Are you yeah. able to touch on some of the finer points? I know specifically one of the fans was keen to hear a bit about the upcoming Geisel project or Geisel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, uh, you know, here's hoping to it reverses it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, hey, you never know. You never know. I, I emphasize that pretty much always, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, total total tangent um i i just recently reversed a cherry pie and wow i figured i figured that one that one was like you know yeah, kick back relax watch the pollen fly right because you know cherry pie is a herm you know <laughs> it's it's gonna be easy uh complete fail i the the run is drying right now but if I got one percent seed, yeah, I'm lucky. Uh, so, you know, I don't I don't count chickens. Or I try not to, and every time I do, I get slapped. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I've got to ask, what sort of plants would you be most interested in pairing cherry pie with? Um, I I, I definitely you know wanted. I always want S ones. That's my main goal every time. I do a reversal because I like digging through the S ones and, you know, pulling, pulling plants out. Um, but, uh, um, I, I had a, a, a bed full of granddaddy purple, uh, purple Urkel, grape ape, uh, some of the Urkel S ones. Um, and then, uh, I had the, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, uh, you know, OGs, you know, uh, TKs, sour d's you know that kind of stuff so you know and then you know a few few in-betweeners you know um you got you got me thinking now when you do these reversals is it all very ultra methodical in terms of what females go in the room or is it the case that because you've got so much going on it's sort of like you've always got a good rotation of mums and you just sort of chuck in what's ready to go oh no 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 it's it's methodical um I, I try to do, uh, I, I, I try to, you know, do multiple different, you know, pairings, like pair things that are like kind, pair things that are opposite kind, you know, and then, you know, pair things that are, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, that I just think might, might be cool. Um, but, uh, I overdo it on, on clone production, like, you know, in an average month, I'll probably, you know, end up taking i don't know a couple thousand clones and then so i always have or usually have a really you know broad pool to select what i want to put into these rooms and so you know i usually get what i want in my rooms not always but usually that's beautiful and i mean you you open the floodgates i feel like 
how on earth like what's your clone tech how on earth do you do that <laughs> just uh just just plugs and i also i use uh like big plugs um you know 50 per tray but they're like two inch plugs whatever and uh um and that that allows me time because you know the plugs are big enough so the you know the clones can sit in those plugs for you know three four five you know six weeks you know sometimes and so uh you know i'm able to have you know clones on deck for you know because if you're feeding you know five different rooms you're always trying to you know <laughs> you, you need that stuff ready sure and do you have like a go-to rooting stimulant or it's just variable I just use basic old clone X, um, liquid, you know, uh, and, and dip and grow. So, you know, neither of those is organic. Uh, my clone is not organic folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that makes sense. So if we loop back, you know, you mm -hmm. mentioned that you're trying to reverse the Jesel. What sort of plants yeah. do you think would pair really well with the Jesel? I mean, uh, you know, definitely chems, OGs, uh, you know, um, diesels, you know, they'll kind of compound, but it, you know, everybody does that too. The ones that, you know, are, uh, um, you know, a little, a little bit of a mystery definitely would like to have some hash plants in there, you know, some puck, some HP 13, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I tend to with, so like with diesel, you know, I'll, I would generally tend to stay away from fruity stuff, you know, like cherry AKs, strawberry cough, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't know if diesel would be the greatest thing to, you know, slap against Girl Scout cookies or wedding cake or fritters or, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think Skittles would be in, you know, a diesel run. I don't know. Uh, that might just get weird. <laughs> I mean, it sort of makes sense. Like when you're saying it out loud, I'm like, yeah, I, I get the impression it would like dominate them and, and like sort of muddle it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I definitely try for, for light kinds, but then, you know, something like, you know, uh, some of the hash plants mixed with it, you know, they definitely can, you know, make something decent, I'd imagine. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, if we, I mean, in my mind, I sort of associated the the Jeezel collab with Matt and I've heard you may be doing a, a headband collab with Not So, is that correct? Oh, uh, well, I mean, uh, it, it might be a different type of collab of sorts. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still working out the details. Let's put it that way. Beautiful. I know, I know everyone's really, really, really keen to, to see that that take off you know because i mean yeah. i'd be interested to hear how do you compare that headband the la kush to other headbands is it similar is it different what do you like about it i mean uh not so headband is like a strong uh like diesel plant um other other headbands you know uh, there's there's multiple og kush type headbands there's the 56 day headband there's Lumpus headband. Both of those are, you know, just straight up OG Kush types. Um, then there's uh, the 707 headband, which was like a OG sour diesel type, you know, um, that was popular around here, you know, like 15 years ago or longer. Um, but uh, um, Natsu's headband is is really similar uh, to this this cut that circulated around um, like, I don't know, 15, 15 to 18 years ago. And uh, multiple people uh, had this cut as like a chem dog 91, but it was a sour diesel type plant. You know, I mean, doctor of archive, you know, got, got this plant as chem 91. And then uh, I think Lumpa, Lumpa got it as, chem 91 too and the it, it was these diesel plants like a sour diesel type plant just like uh not so's headband um so i don't know i don't even know how they they got named as chem dogs or headbands or what it was just uh, a little strange a little strange but good quality plants 
Do you do you know is that the uh the the JB Chem ninety one cut? Mm, oh no 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 the JB uh um I I got that that cut uh I don't know maybe fifteen years ago um or so and the JB was like uh I actually ran the JB next to um that other that sour diesel type Chem ninety one cut um and the chem 91 was like this big burly diesel plant. Whereas the JB was like this skinny little sad sister to sour D. I mean, just, just in my side by sides, you know, one person's experience, but <laughs> I didn't have a whole lot of respect for the JB, the JB one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Look, I mean, it goes to show just the sheer amount of cuts that are incorrectly named chem 91. Right. Oh, it was it was bad. It was bad, and it still is. I mean, you know, there's there's tons of Chem ninety ones going around. You know? Right. On the on the topic of purple strains, I wanted to talk to you about the pink and perps. This is oh, what yeah, yeah. you did. You know, it's it, it took place in between now and our last chat, so we didn't talk about it last time. Right. I remember when you first started posting about this. The first thing I wanted to ask was. Uh-huh. What is it about this line that really captivated you? Because it seems like you were really interested in it. And I was like, it looks cool, but, you know, I can't smell it. I can't taste it. What did you like about it? Okay, so uh, Pinks and Perps kind of started it out as a mystery for me. Um, I was I was touring my buddy uh, Shiva. I was touring his farm in Mendocino. And he had made uh, this hybrid that was like Dog's Waltz the the purple dog um that was you know pretty popular around here uh, for a while um he had made a hybrid with that um and uh oh what did he oh he he crossed it to afghani number one right and he had crossed a bunch of different things with that afghani one um and everything else was just green and this dog's waltz, this, you know, purple dog bud or purple dog, purple dog, um, every plant in his garden, pretty much of that, that cross had dark purple, almost black flowers and pink hairs, right? You know, like bright fluorescent pink or almost red hairs. And I'm like, well, all these other hybrids with the Afghani one are green. So they probably didn't get any of this, you know, purple and, you know, pink hairs from the, the Afghani one. And I'm like, I've grown dogs waltz. I've grown that, you know, purple dog. And this stuff doesn't look anything like it. It doesn't purple like that. It doesn't have, you know, pink hairs. And so I backtracked and our buddy blaze he had made a hybrid um, of this killer queen uh, Mendo purple crossed to a Hawaiian and that the Hawaiian had pink hairs. And then the Mendo perps in that, uh, you know, uh, pushes its purple forward. And he had actually made it F2 and he's the one who had given the, the dog's waltz to Shiva and so I was like, you know, I think, I think, I think you uh, might have given him the wrong cut, you know. And uh, our our buddy NCGA was the one who made the the killer queen Mendo perps. And now you know we're we're backtracked all the way to like two thousand what three or something two thousand two. Um, but anyways, so I, I had to investigate this all the way back. And I, you know, finally figured that it wasn't what it was supposed to be. It was, you know, this totally different thing. Um, But, uh, you know, I I liked it when I saw it at his farm and he gave me a huge, you know, container of seeds and I ran out like 180 of them and made an open pollination, made a bunch of selections, blah, blah, blah. And then I ended up finding one of my favorite plants I found in a few years, you know, out of that, which is uh, the Sweet Sixteen. And what's she like she i mean no two people I, I brought her to the the party uh uh that that matt threw and uh no two people could describe her the same i mean 
I think she's like mango pineapple. Other people were saying like apple this. Um, some people said mango. Some said pineapple. Some said apple. It's like no no two people smelled smelled her the same. But she was like one of the few that was like a, a green one in the whole bunch out of 180. Um, and full of seeds, you know, after just sitting for, you know, months or whatever, just drying because I kind of neglected the, the finish on that run. Um, she reeked. And usually m- most things don't smell, you know, when they've just been sitting forever. And so she holds her terpenes really well which is, which is pretty rare, you know, especially as strong as she was. So, you know, um, de- definitely one of my recent favorites. Yeah. Wow. It sounds like a really unique profile as well. Like, cause you don't hear a lot about apple profiles. I feel like that's also a very underrepresented flavor. Right. Right. Kind of like the X terp. Yeah, you know what? I forgot about that. You know, do you do you find that terpene commonly in the X eighteen? I mean, when when I grew her, yeah, it was it was nice, but that smelled like apple to me. Where I I don't get the apple from the sweet sixteen, but other people do. So, you know. Okay, interesting. Yeah. What? So you're you get more of the uh, the mango pineapple, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, but everybody smells so different. Yeah, sure. And and do you feel like it's like a hybrid sort of effect? Is it more indica leaning? Um, she almost seems a little bit more of a sativa effect to me. Yeah, yeah. I I honestly think she might be like a a throwback to uh, the Killer Queen, which is a Cindy ninety nine hybrid. Um, I think it's like a G thirteen Cindy ninety nine. But I mean, that's that's a lot of a lot of generations past that. Yeah, I guess I was thinking about you also mentioned the Hawaiian. I was thinking maybe it's sort of coming right. from both ways. Yeah, it, it could be. It could be. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. That's that's more higher on my list to to give a good run because I, I'm always keen on sativas. Yeah. 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 I mean, on that topic, you know, you mentioned the uh, the Pink 16, one of your favorite in the past few years. And earlier on in the episode, you mentioned being really fond of the lemon tree. I wanted to ask you a few questions about it because I have had a few people message me and say, you know, is, is lemon party lemon tree? That's the first question, I guess. Um, so I think, um, I think lemon party um, might be and s1 possibly hybrid but uh either a s1 or a hybrid of lemon tree um i think it might have come from like straight organics and um it, it it's like a a tall lanky plant at least it is for me it, it's a tall lanky plant and it's it's like just as pungent as tangy like just over the top you know candy just you know fruit but more on the lemon lemon turp profile um and uh then then lemon tree is like this short you know stumpy bubba kush type plant um with just you know super pungent um just strong strong like lemon oil type terps more i I, I'm terrible at describing this kind of stuff, but that's, that's kind of as close as I can get. Um, they're both great plants, but you know, quite, quite a bit different. And yeah. I've, I've heard from some of the, some of the guys, uh, you know, that are real familiar with lemon tree is, you know, you, you, you do get, uh, some of the, um, some of the lankier sativa type plants coming out of them. Um, there, there's a bit of mystery to it. I don't know if, you know, because uh, some of them say it might it might might have come from a uh, organ, and it could be like a old organ lemon diesel. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Okay, and then so in that case, which one do you like more? Uh, I mean, I kind of like lemon party. <laughs> you know, I mean that sort of makes sense in a lot of ways, and I mean when you described it. That sort of 
checks out a little more with the common lineage you hear, which is like there's meant to be what, like a sour diesel, lemon skunk sort of thing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, something like that. Um, and it, it's definitely one of the, the most pungent plants um, I've come across. You know, you run it with 50 other different hybrids and it's the only thing you can smell in the room, you know. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. I got a, uh, a pack of yours of the... Um the melvin cross to the lemon party i was like man that one's gonna be a hitter <laughs> right 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 now that one could be very very good yeah like well, i was thinking it should be like citrus central right like just exploding oh yeah yeah no definitely definitely yeah yeah that's cool okay and then i guess the final question on this one for me is i guess in a sense the lemon party S ones are essentially lemon tree S twos. As long as the lemon party is like an S one, you know, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. I I know. I feel like you're one of the only people who really gets into the S twos hard. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) Oh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of them, you know? Yeah. There we go. Do you, do you offer any S threes at the moment? Oh no. And I haven't even offered any of my S you know, legit S twos. I'm I mean sure I, I probably have a few S twos, but you know, um they're not marketed as as S twos because I can't, you know, claim a hundred percent that they're S twos. You yeah. know. Uh, sure. I mean and honestly, most people I don't think would be e- extremely thrilled running out some S twos or S threes, you know, or at the very least S threes, you know. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. It's different. They they're sort of looking for that vigor. Yeah, the lack of vigor just might not be the ticket. So Yeah, okay. I mean, while we're on the topic, I I I don't think we asked it earlier, so I definitely got to ask it because it was submitted by three different fans. What is <laughs> the most interesting thing you've ever seen come out of an S1 like really just unexpected left of field? Huh. Um, I think I posted pictures of it uh <laughs> years ago on a uh, on ig um uh i had this plant <laughs> uh, i think i i posted pictures of it, it was tight <laughs> it might have got to two inches tall yeah but it was on its like 20th node it was like a ball it was like a little blue blue green ball <laughs> and it was like I had it for like six months and it was like two inches tall at best. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> not the mutant most people would want. <laughs> yeah. And when I tried flowering out, it died. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was all sad. <laughs> it was not meant for this cruel world. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was, it was a sad little ball of a plant. <laughs> oh, wow. I love it. That's so cool. Yeah. You just reminded me of that incredible photo that uh, not so posted of that mosaic yeah. plant in your garden. Can you tell us a bit about that one? Oh, well, that was in a, a garden he was working with, uh, but uh, um I mean, you know, he's he, he's way more familiar with that. Uh, there was a huge debate. I never even ended up reading all the comments because it got a little too crazy. Um, but I mean, a lot of people, you know, think that's a, um, you know, uh, a virus or something, blah, blah, blah. But it's just as likely that it's just a genetic, you know, mutation as any virus. So, um you know, I, I told me years ago, you know, when, when, when Chem D first was, you know, getting into circulation, he was like, you know, that's just a genetic, you know, blah, 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 and not no stank virus. And if, if, if th- something's a virus, you kind of expect it to pass on somewhere. And when they don't like pass on, I think it's probably just a genetic something, something. So I what, What's your verdict on variegation, you know, because there's still some people who are really adamant in their belief that it's a form of a virus and then other mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. are like, no, I think it's just a trait. Yeah, I, I think it can be either or, you know. I, I think, you know, if if you have a something that's variegated and, you know, it's in your rooms for X amount of years and then it passes on or it passes on, 
Um, obviously it's a, a virus, but I mean, I don't take any more, you know, time with a chem D cut, you know, you know, taking clones or any of that kind of stuff and it's never passed on. So uh, that just leans, leans towards, it's just a, it's just a genetic trait, you know, I mean, so. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And, you know, it's been a while since we chatted. So although it's sort of old news, we just can touch on it quickly. How have you been affected by hoplite and viroid? Um, so, um, back in like 2011, 2012, I think it was, um, I, uh, I had gotten, you know, um, I was doing some heavy trading with people and I'd gotten a bunch of cuts from, you know, jungle boys that you know before they were jungle boys and you know a, a few other cats i'll i'll let them rename <laughs> remain nameless um but i got just tons of this you know th- these messed up you know plants and uh i got the white fire uh the uh jungle boys you know five keeper plants of white fire the 43 the 80 the 28 you know and I grew them out and I'm like, who would ever keep these plants? They're complete garbage, right? They, they all herm. They, th- there's no frost, you know, they look like crap. And, you know, I have my, the rest of my room looks great. And anyways, fast forward, found out, you know, it was some kind of something, you know, they didn't figure out till y- years later, but I figured out, get rid of those fucking plants, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, I, I quarantine everything you know, especially more so now, you know, ever since like 2014, I'm like, uh, uh-uh, <laughs> you don't come in unless you, you got papers. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, I've, I've definitely had, had plants that, you know, were, were positive, but they've always in, you know, I've always quarantined them, knew they were. And so I either throw them away or, you know, uh, um or keep them segregated um so i i haven't had any any hp uh whatever whatever any of that virus in in my room in probably a damn near a decade do you think that it'll be like um it'll be a a virus that sort of just dies out eventually. Cause I feel like when I talk to people, a lot of people are like you and they're like, I now know what I need to do. And I I don't feel like I've had it for quite a while. Do you think it'll, it'll die out or do you think it'll be like the flu with humans where it just, it just sort of circulates around and it's always there, but it's sort of in the background. It's really easy to not, you know, uh, keep it from not spreading. Um, you know, uh, just don't bring it in your rooms, you know, and it's really easy to spot. I mean, um, ever since I got rid of, you know, um, all the plants that had it, you know, years ago, um, you know, and it started doing protocol, you know, of not introducing stuff, you know, straight into my rooms from strange gardens. Um, you know, I haven't had a problem with it. So, you know, I, I think it's going to stay around because a lot of people are sloppy, you know, you know, I mean, eh, I, I, I have plenty of stories of bringing the wrong plant into the garden. So, <laughs> you know, definitely, definitely, definitely. I wanted to ask you about it because I've been wondering for a while, the ruthless runs cuts. How is yeah. that different to normal runs? And is it really connected to the RBL posse? <laughs> yes it is and uh um i think i should just like um you know uh <laughs> keep quiet on that one <laughs> i mean rbl is gangster rappers so you you, you probably don't want to tell them what their cut is um what what i will say though is uh for what it is it's a great cut um it um is one of the most stable cuts um that i've s1 and bred with um it uh is very potent and passes the potency on um and it's very uniform um 
but uh, I have a hunch that it's an S1 of something else, and there might not be any Z in it. So, I mean, you know. do you feel like Runts really expresses a ton of Z, generally speaking? Because I've felt like whenever I tried Runts, I was like, this is just gelato. Uh, so, um, I ha- I have Runts as well, or just regular Runts, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's. There's plenty of Z in it. Okay, yeah. So maybe I've just been having ruthless runs. Yeah, essentially. Essentially. <laughs> makes sense. Uh, it makes sense. I mean, out of curiosity, why do you think, like, I've noticed that, like, the sherbet profile has really come back into popularity. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, that creamy gelato sort of vibe seems to be very popular with people. Right. Do you have any suspicions about why that's come back around? Because it's almost like it had its time in the sun, then it got pushed out of the way, but now it's back again. Right. Obviously, people like it. I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, on, on, on that one, uh, um, uh, I've never actually run the the Cookie Fam Sherbert. I've always uh, run the, the Green Sherbert, which was – you know, real popular around Humboldt, Mendo, all that, which is the one that, you know, seems like it's probably related more directly to Skittles, you know, whereas the Sunset Sherbert from Cookie Fan, that's, that's the one that's, you know, uh, you know, more, more gelato-esque, I think. Yeah, that's certainly the flavor profile I think has been really popular recently. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, we've got an interesting fan submitted one here. They say, this is all hypothetical, but I suspect it relates to them. Um, But they're saying, you know, if you were to live in like a prohibited state and the market, there's no good weed, you know, no one even really knows what OG is, what cookies is. You could probably give them anything and say it's OG. And if it was good weed, they'd be like, right on. Um, So the question is, if you live in such an area, what strains that you offer in seed form would you say would be a good thing where like, you know, it, it's going to give someone like a quality end product. They're going to be able to offer something that's sort of not currently available. What would you offer to someone who's in like a, an environment where it's just ample playing field to pump out some nice herb? I mean, I, you know, I always, I always recommend the, the, the big bad wolves just because they got the potency, you know, super strong. They stink. And and you know they they've got pretty good yields too. You know, I mean, when 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 I first ran the the one big bad wolf, I mean, oof, if I had uh, kept that that cut, uh, I could I could be doing some four pounds of lights right now. <laughs> beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Okay, since we last spoke, have you changed your mind on CO two? You using CO two at all, or still not? Oh, far too lazy. <laughs> I, I keep it simple. I keep it simple. <laughs> no, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Uh, have there been any major changes to the way in which you grow? Have you switched over to LEDs? No, far too cheap. <laughs> I mean, far too poor. Far too poor. <laughs> what are you rocking? Just metal halides, HPS? Oh, uh, that would be nice. That would be nice. No, it's just still uh, still same old uh, DEs. Yeah. Oh, nice. Gavita. If it is in the sort, yeah. Um, I'm not too amped about <laughs> upgrading to anything in anytime soon. Is that do it, like do we just need to g up a sponsorship for you, like Fozy? If you're listening, send my man some LEDs. <laughs> maybe, maybe. No, uh, when when I when I get back to you know some flower production, uh, for my dispensary, then then I'll be buying some new equipment. You know. Yeah. By the way, yeah. do you have a name in mind for the facility? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I have one. Um, I'm I'm gonna hold off and touch on that next time. How that be? No worries. I'll I'll leave. I'll let you keep your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm I'm keen to know what sort of projects are you currently excited about? What seeds are you keen to pop? Um. So. Uh, um. My next uh, uh, flower round, um, I'm running through uh, a ton of Bubba S1s. I'm, I'm finally going to do 
you know, work on my Bubba S2 project. You know, I got bomb threat, you know, ready to, you know, get up in there. Um, and then uh, I also have a handful of lemon party hybrids, lemon tree hybrids, um, and uh, some sweet 16 hybrids. Um, you know, of course, F1 Derbs. Um, and uh, a, a, a few other things, a few other things. But, uh, you know. Get, getting away from the whole uh, uh, dessert. I think the the last time I, I did mostly dessert dessert products. I wanted something a little different this time. Yeah, understandable for sure, understandable. Um, I guess I'd be keen to know, you know, this is probably going to be a weird question. Happy to, happy to cut it out if it doesn't fit. Um, what has been a line of yours that you thought would be really popular, but like it turns out it just hasn't, quite had as much traction with the general public i mean a uh, pinks and purposes are perfect perfect example um you know i i really like pinks pinks and perps um but you know i also you know i'm not great at marketing either so you know i really didn't push it like you know i could have should have but yeah well uh, very very few people were like woohoo woohoo you know <laughs> so you know we got to change their mind, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all right. You'll see it on my Instagram soon. <laughs> on uh, on the other end of the spectrum, mm-hmm. what's what's one of, if not your most popular lines, if you just had to think off the top of your head? Um, I mean, uh, every, everybody still. I mean, o- overall, people tend to like the S ones over the hybrids in general. And I mean the TKS ones, the Chem DS ones, those are those are always at the top of the list. So, yeah. Even even though I I I do recommend just for solely growing, you know, hybrids are you know better than S ones, but S ones are better if you want to you know breed your own stuff with them, make your own selections. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. That's. That's really interesting. Okay. Um, and how much value do you think we, sh- we as a community should place on pheno hunting? You know, like I understand that, you know, everyone everyone wants to just run some Kiva clones and make some head stash every so often. But me, myself, I usually try to have some new stuff in there most rounds to just sort of be at least slowly injecting some stuff in. What do you, How do yeah. you feel about that? Do you feel like we should try to impart some impotence that you know there is value to always sort of having some new stuff rolling in oh yeah i mean it really depends on where you're at you know what what you're you know um you know what what what's important to you whether it's just personal smoke or you're you're doing it commercially or whatever um but i mean you know uh i don't know honestly uh i think it's always always good to you know run some new with the old you know yeah definitely definitely i mean while we're talking about new and old i had no idea how i was going to slot these questions in but this is it right here we're doing it Um, you know i was specifically interested because you've got this experience with the nl5s part of me was wondering is there any way in which this or just in general how your thoughts of Neville and his accomplishments have changed over the years. You know, now that you've had experience with some of these lines he was working with, for example, has anything changed at all? I mean, not really. Um, I went through a, a, a phase through, through probably the mid late nineties um, all the way through, you know, probably the mid two thousands where um, I grew up in Humboldt. So I wasn't really impressed with anything from Amsterdam, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So, you know, you factor that in, it's just like, eh, you know, but since then, you know, I, I, I've realized that there's tons of stuff from Amsterdam. I like, I just hadn't, you know, I was too stubborn to grow, you know, a bunch of it based on, you know, early formed opinions. Sure. Look, I think we can all acknowledge that one way or the other. You know, maybe the opposite way for a lot of growers. You know, they 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 end up lauding DNA genetics only to realize it's not as good as they thought. Yeah. On in that same sort of school of thought, 
What's your thoughts on Shanti? Would you ever consider buying and growing Mr. Nice Guy or is there a bit like too many concerns about the current gear versus the older gear? Uh, oh, I have so much to grow. Uh, it would be very hard to, <laughs> you know, e- experiment with, you know, you know, new new stuff, other stuff. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So with that being said then, who, who were some of the breeders who you, at least now, you know, have held in high esteem from years gone by? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good one. Um, I used to really like DJ, um, but, you know, then I talked to DJ. <laughs> and so, I mean, I don't know. Uh, eh. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of hoped... I would have learned more from DJ. Sure. Yeah. He, he's, he's very much an enigma, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, uh, I'll probably cut this out, but what, what's your thoughts on um, JD and the whole Blueberry Bubba claims? <laughs> <laughs> JD's entertaining. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Definitely, definitely. Uh, he's, he's a character. He's a character. <laughs> See, now you don't have to cut it, cut it out. <laughs> You're too good to me. You're too good to me. Um, I think that just about brings us to our final five questions, and they've evolved a bit since the last time we spoke. So the first one is, if you had to restart your company, let's just say, you know, one of those horrible fires rips through your property. I sincerely hope that never happens, but let's just say hypothetically it did. You had to restart your company from scratch with just one packet of seeds that you've made. It can be regular, it can be femme, you can do whatever you want. You know, you could find a female and reverse it. What one pack of seeds are you going to pick to restart the company with? Damn, just one pack? Yeah, it's tough. Damn. <laughs> huh. Uh, <laughs> hmm. How about a uh, pine tar kush? Oh, that's a solid pick. Tom would be happy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, I loved Pine Tarkush when I ran it out. Oof. I, I want to revisit that one because I swear uh, I can I can make some stuff with Pine Tar that will remind me of uh, some of the old old stuff I got from my dad that, you know, he, he got back in the early 80s. And, you know, reminisce a little bit. Yum. That sounds epic. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, next one. We're going to drop you off on a desert island. You can only take three strains with you for the rest of your life. Which three? Oh, three strains? How about a uh, hmm. sweet 16, you know, because it's a desert island. We need some tropical. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, damn. How about purple indica, right, or for, for our strong I- I- indica dom? And then uh, may- maybe a nice select cut of a, wait, do I get a, a pack or just a clone? You can do either, either or. Well, I'll, I'll definitely take some some Burmese. And then with, with, with that, I think I could breed, you know, uh, whatever I want. That's a nice mixture. I really like that. Okay. So on the other end of the spectrum, you're going to drop someone else off on the desert island. You're not particularly fond of this person. What are you going to leave them with? Australian bastard cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I play. I play. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they wouldn't know if they could smoke it or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? It's an ornamental. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Um, which out of the chem clones are your favorite? And is that also like in terms of smoking? And then is that also the one you like to breed or work with the most? I think my favorite was the number four until I lost it. Um, and then I, I, I like the, the D um, overall, I think. Um, but I think 91 is like, my favorite breeder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Solid answer. Solid answer. Final question for this interview. What okay. gives you hope in the cannabis community or what would you like to see happen to help things steer forward in a path that you think would be best for us all? Uh, I think uh, 
I'd like to see more people homegrown. You know, I mean, I I want to see more people just you know growing their own plants. You know, I don't know. A brilliant sentiment. I think that just about brings us to the end of it. Are there any comments or shout outs you wanted to make? Oh, I think I'm good for today. <laughs> no problem. As always, incredibly grateful for your time. The man behind CSI Humboldt, the femme wizard himself, blazing a path forward. Incredibly grateful as always. Thank you, Caleb of CSI, for coming on. Thank you. And there you have it, gang. The end of our second installment for our epic second part with Caleb of CSI, a true hero of the Emerald Triangle. We're incredibly grateful as always to have him stop by and share some of his knowledge. What did you guys think? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. As always, we want to give a massive shout out to our sponsors who you will equally not be disappointed with. Seeds here now, number one seed bank in the industry, a guarantee on satisfaction, not just germination. Check them out, guys. You will not be disappointed. All the coolest breeders, the hottest drops, everything you could want and more under one roof. Seeds here now. We appreciate you so, so much. Likewise, Copet Biologicals, we love your pest and predation technology. Please, guys, don't wait until you have an active infection to release some beneficials into your garden. Do it now. Stay on top. Have peace of mind knowing that your garden is happy, healthy, pumping on all cylinders. Huge shout out to Copa Biological Systems. Likewise, a huge shout out to Pulse Sensors. If you're looking to keep your room dialed in, you need to go no further. From VPD to PPF to all the other measurements under the sun, they got you covered. And with the introduction of the latest Pulse Hub, you know you can integrate all of your information into one centralized unit. Whether you got a single tent, a single room, a single building, a multi-state operation, it's time to get serious, guys. Increase resin, yield, flavor, potency. Get serious. Get a pulse. Huge shout out to Organics Alive. You want to be giving your plants the best nutrition available. And you know me, I'm an organic guy, so it's no surprise that I am stoked to have Organics Alive on board. Products ranging from veg to transition to flower. Any problem you're in, they've got a product specifically designed to help you out. Don't just take my word for it. Check them out online, guys. There have been sweeping cups all around the country from home growers like yourself winning incredible cups. There's never been a better time to get on board Organics, guys. Check out Organics Alive. Massive shout out. We appreciate you as always. And a massive thank you to our newest sponsor, Dynavac. If you're looking to get off combustion and give vaping a go, I highly recommend you check out Dynavac. They have small, discrete units, easily accessible both in price and convenience with hits that replicate bongs and joints. I cannot emphasize this enough, guys. If you're thinking that you want to get off combustion, please consider Dynavac. I truly believe in this company. They produce phenomenal products that will give you a hit unlike any vape you've ever tried before. Massive shout out and thank you to Dynavat. We appreciate you greatly. And that's about it for this one, my friends. We'll see you.